Hello everyone and welcome to another homebrew update. I'm your host Troy and we've got a lot of great stuff to talk about this week. Stuff on the Nintendo Switch, on the PS Vita, and on the PS3 and the PS4. So with all that said, let's just go ahead and jump right in. Starting off with the Nintendo Switch, we have a new official firmware update. It is official firmware 5.0.0. This does add some new features that I can't remember, but the biggest thing you want to get out of it is that you do not want to update because they added security features into this firmware update. It is now harder to run homebrew and just alone get dumps of the actual system itself on the newest update. So people have been saying not to update. We already know that some of the exploits in the previous updates have been patched in the newest one. So that means that some of the, like the GPU or something like that, there were some exploits in there that have been patched as well as some other ones. So currently 5.0 is definitely not a good firmware to be on if you want homebrew. Also on the Switch, there is a Tetris clone. People have made a Tetris homebrew clone for you all to play and stack up those lovely blocks and get all those different points. So with the Tetris clone, all you have to do is load it onto the SD card and then load up the homebrew menu and you will be all golden it will show up right there and you can start playing Tetris it is a very very simple version but it does show you the next block and it shows you like the holding blocks as well as you know the score and things like that so it literally has everything that Tetris needs to play Jumping over onto the PlayStation Vita slash PlayStation TV, we have some great news from the flow. He has released the 3.65 exploit, but there is a catch, like I said in the last video, you have to already be on 3.60 to run the 3.65 exploit. Essentially, it is just an updater and allows you to keep the Henkaku exploits from 3.60 and then upgrade to 3.65. This just allows you to play the 3.65 games and then also obviously run homebrew. You can run different plugins on it as well. So that's really cool. So if it's something that you would like to do, go for it. But I do want to kind of keep in mind that if you do accidentally say install the official 3.65 update file or if you need to reformat your console or something like that, you will lose the exploits. You will not be able to reinstall it. And the flow also did mention that people who are on 3.67, although uh, you will be able to get some sort of homebrew on there eventually, there will be no enzo. So you will not have a cold boot exploit of some sort on there. Now that could change in the future, I don't know, but as currently the flow says that will not happen. The popular homebrew application on the Vita as well has been updated. The Vita shell has been updated to 1.83. This essentially just adds support for 3.65 firmware and it brings back the popular auto update feature. Now when installing this version it is a little bit different. I will leave a link to the GitHub in the links below. That way you can look up on how to actually install it correctly. It's not really too much different. There's just one added step to it that you need to make sure you do. And onto the PlayStation 3, and actually this is going to be the very last console. I was a liar when I said that there was any some PS4 news because there's really not, or at least none that I really felt too important to tell you all. So with that said, over on the PlayStation 3, the PS3 exploit version 3 has been out. It has been released. So all the people who are on 4.81 and 4.82 can be able to use Homebrew. Now it is limited. The most you can do is it lets you install fake packages. So you are able to install fake sign PS3 games, fake sign PS2 games, PS1 games, and you could even do like different homebrew things like that. It is not an actual custom firmware. It just lets you run those fake packages. Now, I don't know how that will go with online or whatnot. I didn't do much research into that aspect. So because since it is not an actual custom firmware, maybe you still can go online. I don't know, I would caution about it, or at the very least, try and look some information up about it before you do anything. Alright guys, and that is all I have for you today. This is also a short video, just like all the previous videos 
that I've had for like the past two or three weeks. The reason for today though is I am busy and also there really hasn't been too much in the homebrew scene. Yes, the big announcement of the PS3 Exploit version 3 as well as the PS Vita running on 3.65 firmware for the whole Hinkaku thing. That is amazing news, but I mean it's quick to tell. So, I do want to thank you all guys though, I did just hit 100 subscribers on this lovely St. Patrick's Day. You are actually a lot of my motivation to keep on making these videos, so thank you so, so much. If you guys have any questions or anything that you want to ask me or, you know, just something that you think will make the videos better, please tell me in the comments below. And with that guys, I will see you all next video.